internet and welcome to another episode of That's All I Have to Say About That Africa Wednesday. As always, I'm your host, Stephen Mackey. Today we're talking about a very odd problem that African countries are having. According to Snopes, African countries are having trouble translating certain things President Trump says. And you thought his speeches were incoherent in English. Unfortunately, I do quote the president in this episode, so a few PG-13 level words will be dropped. This translation drama really kicked into gear when African newspapers had to translate. Blank hole. Bleep hole. Bleep hole. S hole. Any sort of hole. Begins with a word, a bad word, and then ends up with hole. Let's just use the word the president is using. Shithole. Newspapers across Africa were having real trouble finding the perfect word to represent the words Trump allegedly used to describe African countries and Haiti. Tanzania translated it to Mataifa Chafu, or Dirty Countries, while Kenya went with Nchiza Kinyesi, which is a more or less direct translation but with a softer word for excrement, maybe more like poop hole. They do have a lot more accurate translation though, but they deemed it unprincipled. Either way, much like someone taking a dump at a poop hole, our poet in chief is making quite the splash in Africa right now. So let's jump right in. Let's start with Botswana, because according to NBC News, the government of Botswana has summoned the US ambassador to Botswana to explain the shithole comment. Yes. Good luck, Earl Miller, a man so American his name sounds like an off-brand beer that a frat party would have a keg of. <clears throat> well, you see, what, what the president meant to say was, well, sometimes shit is a good thing, like, yo, that's the shit. So you're a hole of shit. And, you know, I'd like to plead the fifth, please. Now this is unfortunate, because in the past, Botswana was a pretty big ally of the US, with 79% approval ratings there, and even building a joint school of African and American legal justice there. An even bigger sign of our friendship there is that we actually have an active ambassador working in Botswana, when we don't even currently have an ambassador to South Korea. But don't worry, the US doesn't have to worry about clarifying its speeches to the Koreas. We've got crystal clear communications there. And next to South Africa, the hardest country to get wrong on a geography test. According to Reuters, South Africa has protested to the American Embassy about our president calling their country a shithole. Because, well, of course they did. This Trump comment led to a short period of time when South Africans looked at their president and thought, well, at least he's not Trump, before continuing to call for his impeachment. South Africa's foreign minister was quoted as saying, Relations between South Africa and the United States and between the rest of Africa and the United States must be based on mutual respect and understanding. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that one. I'm not even sure Trump could find South Africa on a map of South Africa. Mike Pence, is that South Africa? Uh, no sir, that's Lesotho. Is that place a shithole too? Anyways, these Trump comments probably shouldn't have come at a worse time if Nelson Mandela had just defeated the apartheid. Because South Africa is currently transitioning from development investment coming from America to development investing coming from China and other BRICS countries. Or as Trump probably sees them, Brazil, shithole, Russia, utopia, India, shithole, China, friend, South Africa, shithole. And this brings us to the real spokesperson of Africa, the African Union. That's the breaking news. Uh, the African Union uh, mission to the United States has just issued a lengthy statement condemning the president's remarks. The African Union mission condemns the comments in the strongest terms and demands a retraction of the comment as well as an apology to not only the Africans, but to all people of African descent around the globe. Now, no real M. Night Shyamalan twist here, but the African Union was not really a fan of Trump's comments, and there are some legitimate concerns about their reactions. One of their biggest criticisms of the Trump revelation was that he was talking about immigrants, and according to them, as well as basic history, most of the immigrants from Africa were less immigrants and more imports. According to the director of African American Studies at Johns Hopkins University's School of Advanced International Studies, wow, that sounds legitimate, I don't think this will just blow over. I think it fundamentally poisons the relationship with numerous countries. 
Trump has undermined 25 years of African goodwill towards the US. To essentially give the back of his hand to 49 countries south of the Sahara creates real problems in many ways. Now, to be fair, 25 years of goodwill might be a bit of an exaggeration. We weren't exactly Mother Teresa in Africa until Trump called their country shitholes. But this does go far in lessening our influence there. Our diplomats have already warned that this statement could impact US companies doing business in one of the world's fastest growing regions and complicates the Pentagon's counterterrorism efforts and security cooperation on that continent. The African mission has said that there is a serious need for dialogue between the Trump administration and African countries, but considering the last time Trump hosted African leaders he mispronounced Tanzania, Tanzania. and Namibia, Nambia. Nambia. I'm kinda surprised they want to talk again. Don't worry, the Donald did stand up and apologize. Here is BBC News commenting on our somehow less embarrassing royal family. The president is also under fire from the United Nations, which criticized his reported crude comments about some countries as shocking and racist. Although Donald Trump now denies using foul language. Yes, amid the criticism from every international entity, Trump has denied these allegations. Although, unfortunately for him, this is definitely a case of the boy who cried fake news. These shithole countries currently constitute $46.6 billion in trade, because apparently shithole countries have money too. According to the Seattle Times, China is filling the void for the US during our four year insane midlife crisis. Apparently when you're pitching public work projects to developing or shithole countries, it's a lot easier to do when you yourself are a developing country who hasn't been a dick to everyone else. According to the Seattle Times, there is no overstating the stakes given the abundant natural resources Africa has to offer to sustain the needs of growing economies through the world, like metal including bauxite used for its aluminum, platinum, and catalytic converters, lab equipment, and dentistry tools, and nickel used in batteries, magnets, and stainless steel. The US under Bush and Obama invested over $14 billion in the region, the ground zero for countries Trump called shitholes, in order to increase relations between the countries. Although recently, China has invested $75 billion in that same region because of its importance in developing and resources. Unfortunately, because of the shithole problem, these countries got pushed into the arms of China. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed that last video. For more episodes of Africa Wednesday, click here. Click here to subscribe and remember to like our video down below. If you're a real fan, you can join our Facebook group. It's just a party down there.